I think my clients would describe my work as unpredictable. I have an intimacy with not only the client, but also the designer. And there's really no other point of hiring a decorative artist unless you can do something that you can't find on the market. A decorative painter is somebody who uh, does custom finishes on walls. A lot of times we do work on canvas and then have it installed on the wall, but in general, you're going right onto the wall. A lot of people hire us for a lot of different reasons, and people are looking for something totally original and unique, and we're able to deliver that product. My name is Caroline Lizarraga. I'm a decorative artist, and I have a company called Caroline Lizarraga Decorative Painting. We are based in San Francisco, California, but we travel all over the world. We're on the road pretty much every month working on projects. Today we are at my house in Oakland. A lot of people move to Oakland from the tech in San Francisco, a lot of artists. Um, I got really lucky. My mentor called me one day, he was retiring, and he said to me, I heard that you're looking for a house. I just have this weird feeling that you would love my house. And we came to this house and it was absolutely amazing and we were very lucky he sold it to us off the market. There's a real creative juice happening in Oakland. We just love it. The house was all peach when we purchased it and it was very neutral. And I am the opposite of neutral, I would say. So I decided that I wasn't going to do anything to the house for a while because we just had a lot of things going on. And um, three days into it, I was painting my son's room. <laughs> In a week, I think I had like six rooms already started being painted. So couldn't sit still. For me, my goal was to honor the history of the house. It is an older house, it's from the 30s. I really didn't have any desire to like rip it up and um, turn it into some modern space. So something that I really love to do is to transport you. The other goal, even though my husband doesn't agree with this, was to not make it overly feminine. I think it's very well balanced, personally. This is my house. As you can see, it's all white on the outside. My friends like to refer to it as the mini embassy, and I bet you think the inside is all white, but you'll be quite surprised when you walk inside. Welcome to my entry. There's a lot of things happening to the left, the right, up above, straight across, but we'll start with one of my favorite things, which is a recycled bike chain chandelier from an amazing artist in Los Angeles that uh, I've always loved her works. Then you head over here and my latest addition to the house, which are our ostrich hedge <laughs> sconces and a custom table we had made from uh, the extra marble we purchased for the bathroom. If anyone ever asked me what my favorite color, I would have to say it's green. So this is my homage to green. Every possible green color is in this room. And then the new center of the room is the hand-painted Malachite fireplace. The thing that we love about this room is it acts also as the gateway to our outside, which is over here. So during the summer, we just keep the French doors open. My daughter plays out there. My husband can be working in here. It's just a great, very cozy, flexible room. The thing about the living room that we love so much is that we have a big deck off of this room. And during the summer, we literally just open the doors and we're just in and out constantly. This is my dining room. It has a lot of special things to me in here. I gold leaf the ceiling and I'm letting it naturally oxidize over time so it looks like it was always here. 
my husband bought me this chandelier. He found it in a palazzo in Rome. It's a Murano hand-blown chandelier that I love for the space. And we hand-painted the walls in a moody forest. I wanted to take it back a little bit to Italy. Um, my husband's from there. We spent a lot of time there. So it's a little bit of a fantasy about Italy. It's not exact, but it is to create quite a mood in the space. And that area over there is really my husband's area. It's the whiskey and espresso bar area that he uh, basically lives at. I love peacocks, taxidermy. The white peacock that's in my dining room is named Higgins after Henry Higgins for the Audrey Hepburn movie. I'm not allowed to bring any more taxidermy in the house, but I will tell you, because a lot of people have an issue with taxidermy, these were not animals that were killed for anything. They died naturally, and I was able to get them from the owners. I work with the farm um, who raised them, and they are my treasures, and my daughter constantly is playing with them and talking to them. I particularly love smaller spaces because I love intimacy. So my dining room is a little smaller. It's very close to the kitchen. I am really into cooking. So it's really easy for me to come in and out um, and be serving my guests. The point of the space is to feel transformed and to feel as if you're in another time era, another, another country even. And I think that the room does that because it is a little smaller, it has an intimate quality in that way. For someone who is thinking about doing decorative painting, I always suggest the dining room and the powder room are actually a great place to start because usually you're trying to create a dip different atmosphere in those rooms and maybe a little moodier than the rest of your house. You can take a little bit more of a risk in those spaces. And so I think it's a good place to start. I also think with um, working with a decorative artist, the sky is the limit. I mean, that's why you hire a decorative artist. Now we're in, I call it a little jewel box room. It's a kitchen nook. I just love this space because we can see our beautiful like 85 year old magnolia tree from here. And it is a small room and I just decided to go for it in here. And one of the things I think is really important in a home is to have a lot of different uh, levels of balance and when I say that obviously I'm a decorative painter so there's going to be a lot of painting in there but in this case I decided to do a wallpaper because I think it adds to the juxtaposition of the house and being that my husband is from Italy we have a great love for all Italian craft and one of them being Fornicetti so the walls are the Fornicetti book walls that I've always been in love with and um, the ceiling is a Venetian plaster. We have like a bunch of things that we've gotten in Puglia from our trips in Italy. It's like a little area for my daughter to play while I'm cooking in the kitchen next door. This is my kitchen where I spend most of my time at my house because if I wasn't a painter, I would definitely be a chef. I love to cook. Uh, space is pretty neutral, but of course I have a bunch of treasures uh, throughout the kitchen. Um, but we do spend a lot of time in here uh, cooking and uh, where my daughter, I'm teaching her how to bake in here right now. One of the things that I decided to do in this house is to not put a stair runner uh, on the stairs. I think that it's fun and unexpected and because my stairs are the first thing you basically see when you walk in the house, I wanted something for you to grab onto. And this is a poem from Dante about true love. And if anyone ever wants to paint stairs, it's actually not that hard to do and incredibly effective. So all you need to do, in my case, I just did the risers. And so I took a measurement of what the words, the height needed to be, and I made a stencil and I transferred the stencil 
onto the risers and then I hand paint it in from there. So it's a great tip for people who wanna do something different in their house. My husband and I, when we first met, we were in Amsterdam together and I saw these incredible monkey lights and every day we would walk by these monkey lights in Amsterdam and I would say, I think I'm just gonna buy them a seat. I like have to get these home. And he was like, no, you're not getting those. And when I got home, he had already purchased them and they were sitting at my door when I arrived back in the United States. So we have a series of wild monkeys taking you up the stairs. So right off the bat, it's just something fun. It makes you smile. I'm, I, I don't take my interior super serious. I want you to have a good time and feel free to be yourself. And we've also created our little family wall here. These are all uh, photos of our travels together and adventures. We travel a lot, so I'm constantly adding to this wall. And my goal is to cover every square inch of the space. My son also is a photographer, so I have some of his pictures that he's taken over the years as well, and just a growing little wall of friends and family. Now we're upstairs on what we call our landing and we created a little moment. I put a sofa up here. We actually spend a lot of time sitting up here reading. We have our monkey lights, we have our uh, shell chandelier, and of course, again, back to my favorite, Fornicetti cloud wallpaper on the ceiling to draw your eyes up. One of the things I like to do in my house is to ground the space with lighting and chandeliers. A lot of times I put them in front of windows. Um, I live in an area where I have a lot of neighbors and I don't need to see their house. So it a, acts as one thing, a functionality, which is blocking some things, but also it makes you stop and you know that you're having a moment in the space. My daughter was born during COVID, and so a lot of the inspiration of this room was not being able to travel. So I did the walls as a little homage to our trips uh, all over the world. When I originally bought this house, um, this room was actually a closet. So the space is very, very small in my daughter's room. So in that case, it became down all to storage. So I designed a custom built-in and mostly everything in this room also acts as some sort of storage. Um, with the cabinetry, uh, the built-ins. I even have a step stool with stacking books. It's all about being able to move things so she feels cozy, but it also looks good um, if you need to have people come and see the space. These lights here are from a friend of mine, Wendy Shan. She's a knot artist. Uh, showing all over the world. I lacquered the ceilings and my friend Malia Landis made the beautiful porcelain bugs um, that go throughout the room. And I think that's also another trick for small spaces is again, like pulling your eye up um, and out. So I did a lighter color in here that's a little bit similar to the color of like um, a purpley gray hazy day. So your eye draws up and out into the sky. Now we're in my son's room and my son just went off to college and apparently is not coming home. So he did give me the green light to change his room. So previously his room was a lacquer graffiti wall, very dark, very moody. Um, and I just wanted to change things up a bit. So I now changed the walls to be a crocodile plaster and sort of like a Cabernet color. And the ceiling again is plastered, but I wanted to go with the shape of the ceiling. So I striped it so it followed the uh, correct shape to carry your eye around the room. 
and had a new bed made of course but we did keep his neon lighting and I acquired an amazing um, gothic pagoda piece from a client of mine and then the last piece that I got at a vintage store is uh, a barber chair that apparently will be leaving with my son he has told me. This is my bedroom. Um, I love the space, I love color, I love drama, I love creating a mood. The walls, I usually uh, work a lot with Benjamin Moore paint. This particular color I love, Smoke Embers, is the base color and then I go over it with lacquer, silver leaf, gold leaf, and I let the products like drip down to create this moody effect. We carpeted our entire upstairs uh, for many reasons. Also having a baby, it's just super helpful. It's in this stark antelope carpet. And then here are my Italian silk chandeliers that, again, my trick of not wanting to see my neighbors. So I threw two pendants over my windows so it could block the view a little bit. We also have, I designed a floating cabinet with a scallop detail that I silver leafed and did like a brass painting on. And then I have my favorite artist, Michael Mapes, who did a piece for us for when my husband and I got married. We have a primary bathroom and that is one of the things that we remodeled when we moved into the house. And because we have a smaller space, um, this sort of had to be an everything bathroom. So we did rip out a tub and I decided to do black Tadillac plaster, which if you're not familiar with Tadillac plaster, it's a waterproof plaster that comes from Morocco and it really ages just super beautifully. Uh, and I did every wall, the ceiling, everything in there is very dark. And my husband was super concerned and I kept telling him, you, you're going to love this space when it's done because I think there's an illusion about creating darker spaces that you feel enclosed, but actually what happens is you're not seeing all of the lines. So if I had a white ceiling in there, you would realize how small the space really is, but because we have black everywhere, it makes more of an infinite space. We did a beautiful viola marble that um, waterfalls down off of the vanity and into the shower. We have a piece from Taylor Kibbe, who is an amazing uh, porcelain artist. I have um, door knockers from Morocco that hold our towels. Um, I painted the vanity to look like parts of it to look like bronze and. Uh, beautiful tile, uh, mosaic tile from Italy that we got from Ann Sachs. Everything that you see in my house, I can tell you a story behind. I love my house. I come home from a long day of work and I walk in and I just take an amazing breath and feel so grateful to be here. I just see like beautiful memories. If there's something about my house, I just feel very connected to it and I think my family does as well, which was my ultimate goal for this space. <laughs>